For the last few days, I've been completely obsessed with this game for the Nintendo Switch called Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Conceived as the unholy matrimony of Nintendo's A-list, do-nothing-wrong Super Mario franchise, and Ubisoft's not as critically acclaimed more niche B-tier Rabbids series, this unlikely collision of worlds was destined to be a monstrous Frankenstein of epic proportions. It was mixing a gaming legend whose stories and adventures had defined an entire medium of entertainment with creatures that are known for their trademarked toilet humor and mindless screaming shtick. It was being created by a development studio whose most notable credits were for the Just Dance series, and it was being published by a company notoriously known for pushing out glitchy, rushed projects with DLC-laden, price-gouging business practices. Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle was a game that was beaming with caution alarms despite its colorful, endearing exterior at its reveal during E3 2017. Did Nintendo know what they were doing when they signed this one off? When will you learn? When will you learn? Then your actions have consequences! But despite this, the game ended up engrossing myself and many other critics upon its release with some even calling it the most important Mario crossover game in Nintendo history. Why is this? Well, if we want a decent understanding of how this project came to be, and why this crossover works so well, we'll have to take a brief look into the history of video game crossovers and the impact they've had on the medium in general. It's apt to note that most, if not nearly all, crossover games between two established licenses end up being stellar creations and a hit with the general public. This is even true with titles that would normally seem odd to pair together. Like the Disney and Final Fantasy amalgamation known as Kingdom Hearts, or the critically acclaimed fighting game series Marvel vs. Capcom. Studio crossovers, where companies license their IP over to other publishers, often end up working surprisingly well, and this is a practice that Nintendo is no stranger to with Square creating the stellar Super Mario RPG for the Super Nintendo, and more recently, Koei Tecmo creating the Dynasty Warriors and Legend of Zelda crossover title, Hyrule Warriors. These titles may have seemed strange and unnecessary at the time of their creation, but nearly all have developed into classic video game series with time. Despite the fact that these titles came out of the blue as things that we never knew we wanted, they all had a notable amount of pedigree in their creation. If there's anything we can be certain of now, it's that Square can make a good RPG, and Capcom can make a damn good fighting game. This is what makes Mario Plus Rabbids such an anomaly. Not only is it a strange crossover between two IPs for even video game standards, but it's a game set in a genre that neither the development studio or the franchises involved have experience in. Mario's creator, Shigeru Miyamoto, has gone on record saying that he only wanted Ubisoft to make this if it was a game where Mario explored a genre that he never has before. This prompted Ubisoft to make this game a strategy RPG, and neither Ubisoft or the Rabbids are necessarily known for those types of games. So with all this in mind, the question still stands. Why does Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle work so well as a crossover game? The answer might be simpler than you think. Most of why this collusion of series works so well has to do with the iconography of the Mario series and little to do with the Rabbids themselves. In fact, it's for the same reason that people go to Kingdom Hearts games to explore their favorite Disney worlds, and not to talk to Cloud Strife. Think of Mario and his cohorts as both a blank canvas and a sacred cow. Not only does the Mario series have an unwavering and loyal fan base of people, but each of its characters are extremely flexible and emotive. In this game, Princess Peach is a badass that kicks the corpses of her foes, Luigi dabs and acts like an awkward weirdo, even Yoshi is an explosive loving pyromaniac. These are all personalities and archetypes that have never been associated with these characters, yet feel right at home with the basic emotions they've been known to convey. Heck, Mario's wielding Mega Man's blaster and it somehow works. This is the blank canvas. The Mario characters and world strike a brilliant balance between simple and practical. The simplicity in both their design and personalities 
allows the series characters to be easily melded into an artist's vision. This is why we have such a wide array of different takes in the Mario series from several different minds. The quirky, avant-garde humor of the Paper Mario series is easily distinguishable from the more basic, milquetoast personalities of the Mario platformers. Mario's dominance and inclusion in Mario Plus Rabbids is what ultimately saves this concept from becoming a train wreck. That doesn't mean that the game could have been of low quality. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Ubisoft could not mess this up, and while faced with the pressure, they worked to flesh out the Mario license eloquently. An example, setting the game within the Mushroom Kingdom was the most ingenious design decision in this whole game. Using the rich lore and distinct settings and motifs of the world Nintendo had created allowed these creators to explore a wider variety of locations and play around more with people's expectations. Each environment is whimsical and colorful as we would normally expect from the Mario series. The forests look lush and the frozen tundras feel chilly. This well-known setting also allows the player to come across more familiar faces like Toad and Bowser Jr., making the rabbits and their antics far more palatable for those who don't care for them. That's not to undersell the intrusion, I mean the inclusion, of the rabbits. These manic little creatures are the little bit of spice that adds the charm needed to distinguish this game from other Mario titles. The rabbits can be found littered about the Mushroom Kingdom, disrupting everything in their path. When I walked underneath a giant statue of a rabbit that looked as if it was peeing into a ravine, I couldn't help but chuckle a little. This is true for the rabbit characters themselves, too. When Rabbit Yoshi sadistically kept shooting his Gatling gun at an enemy that was already dead, I cracked a smile and was reminded of what it was like to be 12 again. Very rarely did the rabbit's sense of humor become offensive, and it was the held back approach that kept their presence more charming and less annoying. Though the personality of this title strikes a mood that fits perfectly with Mario's style, it's not the only thing that kept this game from being a flop. The most important aspect of this game that needed to go well was the gameplay, and well, it's excellent. Mario Plus Rabbids boasts an accessible tactical RPG that's easy to understand, but difficult to master. Much in the way that Paper Mario was built to introduce an audience to role-playing games, Mario Plus Rabbids is built in a way to introduce the strategy genre to both a franchise and players who have never experienced it before. The combat is straightforward. Depending on the character's orientation and the cover they're behind, attacks have a 100, 50, or 0% chance to hit. Some maps require that you defeat all enemies in the map, and others require that you exit the map with one character. The goals and basic ideas are easy to grasp on the surface, but underneath it's vast and complex. Each weapon has a chance to deal a certain type of elemental damage, ranging from fire that pushes enemies out of cover, ink that keeps them from attacking for a turn, or vampire that lets you steal health upon a successful hit. On top of this, each character has a sub-weapon that has a certain attribute. Perhaps Peach's Duck Grenade could be used to destroy cover or flush out an enemy. Along with that, each character has certain abilities that they can use along with their attacks and movement each turn. And even past this, characters can be upgraded and customized to your liking. I focused on making Luigi stronger if he had the high ground against enemies, while Peach was a tank who had an extreme amount of health. These are the layers of Mario plus Rabbids combat that make the game both rich and replayable. It's the nuanced combat system that makes this title distinct and strong overall. This title would have not worked if it were anything shallower, like a party or rhythm game. It needed to be a game with dynamic gameplay that someone could sink their time into. Along with the core gameplay, there are moments of downtime where we're able to explore the world of the Mushroom Kingdom and solve contextual puzzles at our leisure. These moments of relief offer the change of pace needed to perfectly balance the game out for more casual gamers. Being able to settle down and take in environments around you is the perfect reward for overcoming a hectic battle. In short, Mario Plus Rabbids is a surprising crossover that works well because of how strong its presentation and gameplay is. Without the added personality to the iconic Mario world and the game's in-depth combat, Mario Plus Rabbids wouldn't have been a success. But with these aspects included, the game has cemented itself in the pantheon of crossover titles that are both essential and classic. It's a game that reinstills consumer confidence in Nintendo's relationships with third-party companies. 
But more importantly, it's a game that will undoubtedly introduce a new generation to the red-capped hero. 